update two for my Mazda 3 long-term report of this G25 Evolve SP Automatic is all about this, rain. Weeks of it, constant rain. Australia's eastern seaboard, and particularly New South Wales, has been deluged with this stuff, and it's been a great test, or maybe not so great, of the Mazda 3's ability and these kind of conditions. Now, being a Japanese car, Japan is also known for rain, so it's kind of interesting to see how this car has performed. It has really been very closely put to the test, the perfect storm, if you will, of how it performs in shit weather. I can see from right here one of its main problems, and that is those headlights. The uh, daytime running lights are those insipid little halogen things on the side, so I leave the lights on all the time because they turn on and off automatically, but those LED lights in there just aren't bright enough. If you're on a brand new freeway at night time with new cat's eyes, it lights all that stuff up, but in suburban streets, in the dark, in bad weather, it's almost like you've only got parkers on. They're just not strong enough. The other aspect that we can see from here is its automatic wiper performance. They're just not on their game enough. They're not quick enough when heavy rain starts, and even when it's turned on to maximum response, they're still flapping away in normal mode, as we shall discover when we're in the car. They just aren't on top of their game, and combine that with the headlight performance at night time and those Toyo tyres in the wet, it's just not quite ideal, as we shall discover when we're in the car. It's these kind of conditions that just aren't really the Mazda 3's forte. And I think that starts with the Toyo tyres because they just don't have the wet road purchase or the progression when they let go on these kind of surfaces to really complement the dynamics of the car. Like sometimes you'll be driving slowly and the transmission will think, no, I need first gear and kick back to first and actually makes them break traction. Then there's the moment when you actually stomp it or need maximum power and the front end will just completely go sideways although admittedly caught by the ASC so that torque steer isn't a problem but this isn't a hugely powerful performance car this is just a fairly muscular everyday hatch the other is just the general demisting and that inside the car here I'm behind the wipers that I said don't turn on quickly enough but even when you hit demist on the dashboard here in bad weather the windscreen is fine but the side windows here are only demisted by this little sort of insipid vent here that looks cool in terms of design integration. It's completely built into the A-pillar, but it doesn't have really any air at all. It's like a little wasp breath, like it's not doing anything. Um, I can just feel it on my hand here. And after about 20 minutes in heavy rain, all of these windows start to fog up. When I was driving at home one particular Friday night when all of these problems were crystallized into one sort of slightly stressful half an hour journey, I actually wound these windows down and up several times in the rain to try and clear them on the brushes in the window channels. The other is the A, B performance of the car. I had the settings in the screen here on normal and not late, and I thought normal would be testing the way it would react to normal driving, but in the dark, if the rear AB will come on really quickly, uh, the front AB can hold on too long, hit the brakes too early and actually continue braking even when there's nothing in your way, much to this may of anyone who is close to the car, um, not to mention the driver. And finally, it's that lighting performance. So not only are the headlights not great, but then the rear tail lights, while they look good, which is why I leave the lights on all the time, because those little red rings are really cool and I must say I love the way that the blinkers kind of pulse and have this lovely pulse effect when they turn on and off but when you're reversing in the dark looking through these mirrors which are very useful they dip down depending on which side you've got selected I've got right at the moment so if I hit reverse this one would bend down or I could switch to the other one and then that one would bend down but you still can't see through the window you still can't really see out of the back end of the Mazda 3 and while the camera's trying its best in the rain, the lights just aren't strong enough, even the reversing lights even. You're trying to drive in the mirrors, it's just, it's, I don't know, for a modern car, it seems to me to be not good enough, especially when you don't have the glassy vision of the cars of old. You're relying on the systems in this vehicle in particular with its sort of fastback, hunchback design to help you, and I just don't think they're helpful enough. So in summertime, Great, 
the Mazda 3 hatch I think works really well. It looks great, all that other stuff. None of these things are really an issue aside from the AEV performance being too overzealous, although I have now switched it to late and I haven't really noticed it being too over-responsive so far. I think though, if you live somewhere that's rainy like this all the time, which turns out to be Sydney every day, then you would be much better off in buying the sedan because it is easier to see out of. And I also think you'd be probably better off buying the manual because then you can choose what gear you're in when you're reliant on these factory fit Toyo tires. If I owned this car, I'd be swapping out those factory fit Toyos for something like a Continental tire or a Michelin Pilot Sport, something like that that complemented the dynamics of this car. And I would also, yeah, choose the manual, not the automatic. But I suppose what is the essence of the Mazda 3 though is that it is a good car, but some of this stuff is gonna need finessing and it's midlife facelift to make it genuinely good, which is what it can be, just not in this kind of weather.